The town of Barrow in Alaska is isolated in 80 miles of roadless wilderness. Once a year they spent 30 days of winter in complete darkness known as the Polar Night. Near this town, the stranger arrives on a boat and after staring at a creepy ship in the distance, he makes his way to Barrow. Outside Barrow, Shara Seven and Billy find a pile of burnt phones buried in the snow, which doesn't look like a prank. They also take the chance to look at the last sunset they'll have for a month in town. People are getting ready to either hibernate or leave on the next plane. Since everyone is so busy, they don't notice a mysterious figure sneaking into the local council and killing all the snow dogs. In fact to the sheriffs they stop to check on Bo whose bulldozer is leaking gas all over the snow. Heaven is in the middle of finding him when they get a radio message reporting the death of the dogs. Meanwhile, Happen's ex-wife Stella finishes her job and takes her car to the airport. In the middle of the road, she's suddenly hit by a bulldozer destroying her car. Stella can't wait to be towed and calls Evan for help. But Evan uses the excuse of having to work to avoid her and sends Billy to pick her up instead. Philly drives Stella to the airport as fast as possible but they still don't make it in time. So now Stella will have to stay a month and barrow back to heaven. He looks at the dogs and finds a complete massacre but the owner's ally and John can't think of anyone that could hate him this much afterward haven't returned to the police station where his grandmother Helen and his brother Jake work with him. They receive a message from the utility reporting some vandalism so even goes to check it out. Carter and Wilson explain someone destroyed their helicopter which is usually kept under lock and key meanwhile. In the cell tower, Guess hears some strange noises outside and goes to check them out only to notice the lights going out. A group of mysterious figures suddenly surrounded but before Gus can react these people jump on him and kill him in order to feed. It turns out they're vampires. In the town Schneider the stranger tries to order a raw burger and something to drink. But the waitress explains they have a law that doesn't allow them to sell alcohol during the dark month. The stranger starts making a scene but fortunately, evidence still arrive at the same time to stop him from getting violent and take him to the station cell. In the meantime, a group of pipeline workers is finishing for the day when suddenly one of them gets dragged into the dark. A few seconds pass before the worker's body falls on the snow, causing his friend to run away and panic. The third worker is frozen in fear and the vampires take the chance to surround him. Back at the station, Evan tries to find out how the stranger sneaked into their town but the man refuses to answer. Suddenly the internet goes out and whenever and tries to call Gus he discovers the phone lines are out too. At that moment, the entire town also loses power and the stranger announces they're coming up and goes to the cell tower to find out what's going on and finds a trail of blood that he follows until he discovers Gus' head. Horrified, Evan rushes back to town and drives around to tell every citizen to stay inside if they don't have a generator then they should hide in the diner. In John's house, Lee is preparing dinner when suddenly a vampire breaks through the window and drags her out. John hears her screaming and goes to save her with his rifle, but when he gets close enough the vampire scratches to keep him away. Unwilling to give up John tries again and even manages to grab Ally's hand but the vampire is stronger and takes her away. At the station, the stranger keeps talking about the incoming for everyone. Jake gets annoyed and throws a piece of his game at him, but this only makes the stranger happy because he can use it to pick the lock. Immediately Jake goes to retrieve the piece and the stranger uses the chance to attack him but at that moment it arrives and shoots the stranger in the air. Then he handcuffs the man to the cell door to interrogate but the stranger is only answers that they'll all die. Eben asked Helen and Jake to stay inside while he and still a look for the criminal. After a few minutes of driving. Evan stops the car because he saw something but when Stella checks with her binoculars, she gets scared and urges me to get back in the car. The pair tries to escape but a vampire suddenly jumps on top of the car and Evan's shooting it it does absolutely nothing. Stella stops the car and this does make the vampire fall allowing them to return to town. When they get back, they see fires everywhere and hear gunshots. Helen contacts them through the radio to ask for help so they hurry back to the station but it's too late. Helen and Jake are gone, only having left a trail of blood behind. The stranger is still in the cell complaining because they didn't take him and asked him to help him and things have been truly considered killing him. But still it stops. Meanwhile, the vampires gather in town to hear from their leader Marlo. He reminds them it's important to remove their victims' heads to prevent them from turning into vampires too. He also wishes they had come to this town sooner because the constant darkness is perfect for them. Then the vampires go on a killing rampage around town feeding on anyone they can put their hands on without mercy a horrified group of survivors gathers in the diner and all share the same experience their bullets did nothing. Evidence still arrive and are relieved to see Jake is okay. But unfortunately Helen didn't make it. The group discusses their options and Carter suggests hiding the utility but that's too risky because it's too far. A woman points out that her neighbor has an attic with a hidden pull down ladder and the house was boarded up before the owner left have been asked Carter to guide the group to that house while he and Stella distract the vampires. The two of them drive around town to act as bait in the plan works soon a bunch of vampires grabbed their car and tried to attack them through the windows. 
Evan manages to kill one of them by aiming at the head but Marlo takes his gun in the car gets flipped over. The vampires immediately reach for Estelle and Devon again, but at that moment both shows up in his bulldozer and runs over the enemy Evan and Stella rush to join him in the vehicle and drive away rather fast until they make it to the house with the attic which is incredibly well hidden as promised. Evan tells the group they'll sleep in shifts and ration their food. They have good chances of surviving because they're used to the polar night on like their enemy. Meanwhile, Marlo and Iris visit the stranger at the station. They commend the man for doing his job perfectly and promise to turn him but when Marlo hugs the stranger he kills him instead. Six days passed with the survivors managing to stay alive and well in the attic. Although sometimes they have to deal with Wilson's father, Isaac having dreams about his wife who died years ago. One evening they hear noises outside and still it looks out through a hole to discover the vampires are ransacking the neighboring houses. Some of the survivors want to leave before they're caught and when Stella Eleven point out it's too risky, an argument ensues. Having calms everyone down and reminds them their team before coming to terms with the fact that vampires are too close. They need to escape to gather supplies from the store and hide in the utility but they'll need some cover thus they agree to try when the next blizzard comes on day 7. The group here is Kristen walk down the streets asking for help. Heaven notices the vampires follow her by jumping on the roofs meaning they're using her as bait. The survivors insist on helping her so Evan comes out and discovers John is around to hiding underneath the house. Kristen is his priority and haven't asked John to wait. But unfortunately this distraction means Evan doesn't make it in time and the vampires begin slashing a Christian before jumping to feed with the vampires distracted Heaven goes to save John but as soon as he pulls him out he notices John is becoming a vampire to Heaven tries to talk to him but John goes rabid and attacks pushing up against the swing set that catches him with his chains. Fortunately, there's an axe nearby that Evan uses to defend himself allowing him to kill John with a few precise strikes. Then Evan runs back into the house where he collapses from an asthma attack. Outside Marlo finds John's body and takes it as a clue of someone being around. Moments later, it's still his turn to be on guard and Isaac takes advantage of her falling asleep to leave the basement. Stella and Wilson hear the door and immediately go after him convincing him trying to walk to the city is a terrible idea. Isaac cries as he thinks his wife won't survive and goes to the bathroom. However, seconds later they hear a noise and discover the doors locked. Wilson picks the lock and they discover Isaac has escaped through the window so Wilson goes after him and pushes Stella away when she tries to stop in heaven. Here's the commotion that comes down to check on Stella but at that moment, a vampire enters the house and they hide in the bathroom. The vampire looks around the house and approaches the bathroom door but when he's about to open it he hears Wilson calling for his father outside and decides to go after him instead. While Wilson gets killed heaven and Stella run back to the attic feeling guilty for abandoning their friend. Suddenly thumping noises can be heard from the roof. Heaven looks through the window and confirms not only that the vampires are gone, but that it's also snowing heavily. Using the wind and snow as cover, the survivors go to the local store to gather as many supplies as they can carry. Suddenly, they hear a noise into their horror they find a vampire girl feeding on a body. The survivors run to find Devon but when he comes closer with his axe the girl's gone. Heaven keeps looking around and the girl comes out of the shadows to attack him, making him drop the axe. The rest of the group quickly comes to help him grabbing the girl together and pitting her against the wall in order for Jake to kill her with the axe, a task that leaves him deeply traumatized. The survivors get ready to leave but they discover it stopped snowing, so they'll have to wait inside the store for another blizzard on day 18 Evan points out they need to leave because the vampires will soon reach this area. The utility's still too far to reach without cover. Let's they agree to go to the police station, but they need a distraction. They realize the vampire sent the stranger to cut communications off early on because they couldn't come out during the day and heaven remembers Helen had UV lights for his plants in her house. So he'll fight the vampires with those while the others run away. Heaven runs out of the building making noise on purpose to get the vampire's attention. However, one of the creatures goes after the fleeing group and jumps on one of the survivors. The group has no choice but to leave him behind as they escape safely making it to the station. The Vampires surround Helen's house and Marlo allows Iris to go first but as soon as she steps inside Heaven receives her with a glowing UV light. Iris falls on the snow as half her body burns and the vampires go to shut down the generator to turn off the lights. Heaven runs through the back door while he keeps his group updated through the walkie-talkies. Sobo tells him to run to Rogers Avenue. Marlo sees Iris suffering and gets her permission to feed on her so she can die in peace. The other vampires follow Eben only to suddenly be run over by Bo driving a ditch driller. He shoots all the ones that try to jump on the vehicle but soon there are too many of them and Bo decides to crash the driller into a building. Then he leaves the vehicle with a box of explosives in hand and since his rifle is jammed, he likes a flare and drops it in the box and watches the explosion that takes down a bunch of vampires before running away in grief. However, Bo is still alive. When he comes out of the building, 
Marla calls him pathetic and kills him with his foot. Heaven joins the others at the station. But their reunion is cut short when Carter reveals he was bitten by the girl in the store when they held her down. Carter lost his family in a car crash and is wanting to end things for a while but he never dared. Now he finally has a reason to ask for assistance. Heaven hates to do this but knows it's for the sake of their own safety. So he takes Carter into another room to kill him while everyone hears on day 27 they noticed a light coming from a neighboring house. Evan and Stella go to check in a shop to find Billy next to the bodies of his family after he killed him to save them from the vampires. He wanted to end things for himself too, but the gun jammed. Heaven scolds Billy for not having even trying to save his family before the three of them return to the station only to find it empty. Since it started to snow again, the trio assumes the others went to the utility and begin heading there. When they hear some noises, they hide under a house and see Gale coming down the street. Stella rushes to grab her and bring her into the house right before a vampire appears so Evan decides to distract him to give the others a chance to escape. However, instead of going with the girls, Billy runs in another direction and fear getting another vampire's attention. Evan manages to run safely to the utility and reunite with the others but he worries when he notices Stella and Gale haven't arrived yet. Meanwhile, Marla gathers the vampires and reminds them humans shouldn't know their real meaning it's very important to find every single survivor and kill them all. Back at the utility Billy arrives without knowing of vampires following him. The beast bites Billy and the group quickly comes to help him when they hear the screams. This vampire is stronger and manages to overpower heaven, almost throwing him into the metal grinder. Billy jumps on the creature and pushes it into the grinder first effectively killing him but also losing his arms in the process. To make matters worse, Billy is starting to turn so Evan has no choice but to kill him too. On day 30 the survivors begin to celebrate that the sun will come out soon. Evan finally manages to contact Stella through the walkie-talkie and she explains she and Gail are hiding under a car nearby. Evan checks through the window and sees they're surrounded by vampires. So he has Stella to wait under the car until morning and they can see the sunrise together. However the vampires are tired of waiting and use the oil that goes bulldozer leaked all over town to start a fire is still on Gail stay out of the car they'll burn but if they come out they'll be killed. The desperate haven't realized as a Human can't win this fight so he uses a syringe to take some blood from Billy and injects it into his own body. As Evan begins to turn the others wonder if they should kill him but a crying Jake protects his brother. Evan says goodbye to Jake with a hug then goes outside to challenge Marlo to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Marlo accepts and begins beating up enough easily but this distraction gives Stella and Gale the chance to escape. Evan's body continues to change while he's being pulverized and when Marlo is about to deliver the final blow Evan's eyes turn black he uses his new for vampire strength to hit Marla's head so hard that he instantly kills him. Having lost their leader, the other vampires run away but Evan doesn't go after them because it's almost on. Stella realizes the sunlight will affect him too. So she takes him to the top of the hill. The couple shares one final kiss as the sun comes up and turns that into ashes and Stella's arms. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.